Welcome back to another exciting episode of MacBreak Studio. We're looking at motion and Mark is going to be showing us a particular effect as a result of somebody who wrote in. Yes, yes. In fact, this is uh, John uh, Oberman. Thanks for writing in, John. He actually posted on one of our Motion Under 5 tutorials, which you can check out on YouTube. You can look up the Ripple Chaining channel. How many, have, uh, how many do you have now? Uh, well, it depends when this airs, but there's at least 20. Okay. So somewhere in there. Um, so he says, uh, I have a suggestion for a five minute video, having a camera do a flyby of an object or a collection of objects, since we're in 3D space anyway, and not only have the camera fly by on a custom path, an arc perhaps, but also have the camera focused on the center group of the collected objects the entire time the camera is flying across the scene. So wow. I thought that was cool. Yeah, this, now, it's a can mouthful. Now, do that in under five minutes. Yeah, we'll do it in under yeah. five minutes because right. uh, I'll, I'll show you. I, I've built the scene. So basically, we want the f camera to fly by something and keep looking at it the whole time. It's, right. it's trained. It's locked on that thing as it goes by. Like a it's, drone. Yeah, it's not looking. It's just totally locked right. on. So here's my, my quick 3D scene. So I threw in, um, I guess I have beer on the brain because I have this <laughs> beer. Was, was is that using... one of the content library beers? No, no. This is, a, this is like a, a stock image that I've used before, but I really like it and it works well here. So I've got a, um, a generator from motion as a floor that's flipped down 90 degrees. I've that's got very carnival-esque. A little bit. I've got some text that's wrapped around and I've done a previous tutorial on how to do 3D text like this where it's, it's actually flat text but it's created in a 3D space around this thing. I've got a light. In fact, I've got two lights. I've got an ambient light so there's a little light behind it. I can turn, if I turn that off, you see it's just this single spotlight and the spotlight you can see is casting shadows. I can turn those off or turn those on. So um, I've got a couple lights in the scene. And uh, if I go to the top view, we can just see the scene from another angle. If I go to the right view, uh, there's the text. If I go to the perspective view and select the camera, there is a camera looking at the scene. So what I want to have the cam camera do, I'm gonna have it fly by this scene here of this text in the beer, go to the other side of it, but keep looking at it. And the thing to think about how to make that happen is the sweep behavior. Okay. Yeah, the, in, a, in the camera behavior category. Yeah, and there's several ways to accomplish this, but I'm gonna use a sweep behavior because a sweep, let's actually, instead of using the shortcut, I'm gonna to go to the library, to behaviors, and to camera. And the reason I'm gonna do that is if I select the sweep behavior, we can see a little preview of exactly what the camera does. See, it's flying by and focused on the gear. Yep. All right, pretty, pretty clear. So what I'm gonna do is take that sweep behavior and drag it onto the camera. Always has to be applied to a camera. I'm going to make a couple changes to it right away in the heads up display. Transition I'm going to set to 100%, which means finish your move when the behavior's over, which to me it should always be 100%. Speed I'm going to set to ease both, so it starts out and slows down like a real camera would, you know, with inertia. And I'll leave the zoom alone. I'm also going to trim it to not last, I don't know, I'll go at around three seconds. O to trim it, command option over, play range out point. If I play now, Actually, before I play, it's going to be a little hard to play because I've got lights and shadows enabled. So what I'm going to do is select... It's hard on your MacBook. It's, it's hard on a, on a laptop. I'm going to turn off the shadows there, and then I'll reselect the camera just so we can see the camera motion. So we're in a perspective uh, mode. Oh, nothing's happening. And I'm like, why is nothing happening? It's very obvious. I didn't tell it what to do. Well, I also... <laughs> I added the zoom layer behavior, so I just... I, I, it looks like I've already had the beer today. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I grabbed the sweep and dragged it onto the camera. Let's try that there. one more time. There, sweep. And okay. don't forget to trim the layer. Trim its out point. Whoa, drop my glasses. Okay, <laughs> we're having a good time. So I'm going to set the end to minus 180. See, that's going to make the camera uh -huh, flip around. Now we're seeing around. something. Yeah, ease both, and it's around the y-axis. So now if I play that, the camera swings around. So it flies by in an arc just like John asked for, always looking at the object. So if I go back to the camera view, if I'm looking through the camera, active camera or control well, A. you're looking through the viewfinder of the lens. Yeah, exactly. So now if I play that, the camera swings around and eventually goes to look at the back. Now, of course, this <laughs> beer is just two dimensional because we're in two and a half D, right? Right. Flat layers in 3D space, but we have this nice camera movement. Now, that's cool. I wanna take it a little further than that. So what I recommend is adding another sweep behavior. This is kind of cool. So here I'm sweeping around. Because you want to fly by, like you said at the beginning. Yeah, so I, well, I'm flying by right now, but all I'm doing when I'm flying by, the camera's not lifting up in the air at all. It's just kind of traveling, yeah. staying level to the ground. So what I'm gonna do, I change this to sweep Y, I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate it, and I'm gonna call this one sweep X instead, and then 
in the heads-up display where it says axis, I'll say tilt on X. So if I turn off the Y just to understand what sweep X is doing, it's sweeping around the X axis, so it's flying above and then mm -hmm. all the way around to the other side, nice. okay? But staying looking at the, the beer. Object. It, looking at the object. So if I turn on both of these, they will work together. They won't so fight now, each other either. No, they will work together to fly over. But I don't like how it ends upside down. <laughs> okay, that's not really what I want. So what I'm going to do is take the sweep X one, and I'm going to trim it to about half the distance, O, and I'm also going to change it to exactly minus 90 degrees, okay? So instead of minus 180, it's hard to do here in the heads-up display. So I'll go to the inspector and set the end for the sweep X to minus 90. And then I'm going to make a copy of it, Command D, and drag that copy down to start where that one ended. And if I want to, I can F6 to open up the timeline to make sure I'll, I'll hold the shift key down to turn on snapping there. Mm. And they snap to each other. Ah. And then what I'm going to do is take this new one and the instead copy. of well, the copy, instead of minus 90, I will change its end to, and I want to show I'm selecting the copy, to positive 90 so we end up right side up. Okay? So now if I play this, we should fly by using two behaviors and then that we switch behaviors and we come back to where we started from in terms of uh, X, okay? Right. So it, it, it like came up and came right back down again, but in the meantime, Y had moved around. And if it doesn't make sense to you, what you can do is select the camera and go to perspective view. Control P is a shortcut way of doing that. And I'll zoom out just so we can see what the camera's doing from this point of view. It's lifting up, it's flying over, twirling around, but then coming back down facing the correct way. That's, that's okay? really cool. By stacking right. a couple of behaviors there. So I'll, I'll go back, control A to the active camera, just so we can see it one more time. And obviously this would apply to any kind of scene where you want to fly by and uh, stay focused on a particular object. And you don't have to go all the way around like this. Usually you would just make a, a small move, yeah. but this shows you how you could completely fly by and stay focused on an object. So uh, that is one way to accomplish the task. Well, one thing that I really like about what you're showing me is that you have this very sophisticated camera and you're doing everything with behaviors. You hadn't used a single keyframe to do that. Right. And that's, right. I, that's I, right. I was reading one of the comments on our, your YouTube channel and one of the comments was, wow, motion is really, well, underrated. People don't really understand what it could do when they start yeah. seeing stuff like that. It just, it kind of blows my mind. That it's approachable. It's too. totally approachable. Because yeah, you're just you're throwing on behaviors and you're tweaking it in real time while you're watching. And then what I would do just to I would turn those shadows back on before rendering at, before exporting yeah. so that we had the full look with the shadow detail in there. Fantastic. So yep. if you're uh, if you're watching YouTube, feel free to comment. We are reading those comments as you uh, as you can see. And you want to check out Mark's excellent training at RippleTraining.com. He's got we have 17 hours of all kinds of motion training <laughs> and uh, make sure you follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook and uh, check us out on the App Store where uh, we're starting to produce more apps up in the App Store that you want to check out. So and Mark, thanks for showing us the excellent tip and we will see you on the next Math Break Studio.